So the three of us and then you spent some time thinking about why we should use Q&A, why is it important? And the number one thing is that everybody has that equal say on our Q&A platform because it's anonymous. It doesn't matter who you are, what role you have within the business, whether you're a director or an intern, you have the same voice within the company. And for those of you that don't know, that's where the VBOX name actually came from. So the VE stands for value every and the voice means Vox in Latin. So actually VBOX is value every voice. And that's kind of the whole point of our platform. Also extremely important is VBOX is not just Q&A. So right at the start of your session, we talk about energising the room, but also in particular for the Q&A board, you want to set expectations and set some ground rules, how the, the kind of Q&A board will run during the session. So explain the reasons why you're bringing Q&A into the session. So as manager, we want to ensure that you're clear on what's taking place over the business over the coming months. And so we really want to hear your questions and be able to kind of respond to anything you're concerned about. One thing I really like to do is kind of for every speaker that's coming onto the stage, I'll put up a host message that says, please send in all of your questions to Bob. Please send in all of your questions to marketing when it's the next group to speak. And it's something that Bob could utilize throughout his session, because as well as having those labels, he can then direct people to send questions specifically to the marketing department that are talking right now using his host message. Just remind people that, you know, this section of the meeting is specifically for this. Host messages are great. You can really tell the difference between the two, like stand out a lot more on the screen in comparison to participant. You can really voice your message across. If you can't get anything across to them verbally, then you can use that host message if people are looking at the Q&A board to drive a message across to your audience. First of all, you need to decide if you really do need the moderation feature for your meeting or your event. So what we always recommend at VBOX is to have a test out, have a play around with your settings and things like that to make sure you need this and it's something that you do require for the meeting. So have a play around with having moderation feature switched off and then send in some test questions and things like that and remove them from the published area to the archive and just have a practice as how you would run the Q&A in a live session. If the moderation feature is something that you potentially might need, so for better organisation, hiding those messages before they go live to the audience, then you'd want to switch that on and then have a practice and collaborate with one of your colleagues so they have the control of that moderation feature as well. And just a quick tip as well, they don't need to be within that account. You can share a moderation link with anyone that's just helping you out on the day. They could be an event organizer or someone who's just helping you out specifically for that Q&A, a simple link that you share with them and they're able to help you out there. Make sure you are verbally communicating that across to your audience, why you have the moderation on and also a host message if you wanted to put something like that in there. The other part about this sort of moderation piece is potentially you might want to set times to look at Q&A. So Q&A, a bit like kind of anything you bring into a meeting, if not looked after properly or handled correctly, it can become a distraction. If you imagine that you've got 300 people in a room, they're all sending you questions, that could be loads of questions that you've got to manage. And some people might be more interested in what questions are coming through on their phone than what's actually being said in the presentation. So by having moderation turned on and setting specific time aside to look at Q&A, what you can do is take a, a group of questions and depending on the length of time you've put aside for Q&A and what the way that you're doing it, you might want three or four, you might want 10, 20 questions, but take a group of questions, move them to the reviewed folder, and then at the right moment, you can then publish them to the Q&A board. When you move them to the reviewed folder, you could also then assign them labels. So Bob could do this, he could take those questions in, put them into the reviewed folder, assign the right labels, and at the right time, bring the questions up and then show questions specifically for marketing, specifically for sales, specifically for senior management, specifically about the merger. But it just gives them more control over the session. And what you're making sure is that your audience member is paying attention to the content that's being shared on the screen rather than the questions that are coming in on the phones. Being able to use the Q&A board, not only for questions and answers. I know that's the title of it, and I know that's the predominantly the main thing that people use the Q&A board for, but mix things up a little bit. One of, one of the examples is an ideas generator. So you can be generating ideas from your audience on a particular topic, idea, subject, get those ideas, let the audience populate that board, and then get them to upvote those questions and like the ideas that they 
feel are the best. And then from there, you can actually make a polling question to categorize those ideas on maybe cost and time of how long they would take with the XY plot polling question, and then really get to those key, you know, that best one or two ideas from all of those original ones. And again, there's so many different things that you can do with the Q&A board. I've seen one customer before in the past, they've used this as a recognition platform. So just getting people to post in there about who their employee of the month was or why they feel that they want to recognize this person and how well they've done in the company. People like that. And then it's just a really nice kind of morale booster for the whole team. So think outside the box with these things. It's not just for questions and answers. For employees to kind of really give their best feel really engaged within their workplace they kind of need to feel that their ideas and suggestions are valued and that they're being heard so they can kind of understand where their roles fit in the overall business objectives so like Lewis was saying if you can't get to all of those questions it is really important that you are addressing them in some way shape or form this is going to continue to kind of build that trust and that transparency with the workforce so make sure you're kind of showing that you're kind of taking some action with those questions questions. So yeah, we, we totally understand if you're doing it all hands, um, it can be hard to get to all of those questions. So some of the things we've seen our customers doing are at that kind of post meeting communication or newsletter in an email form, scheduling a follow up meeting. So it might not need to be necessarily a long meeting, but giving everybody that kind of forum to be able to continue those questions. If you really feel like you haven't kind of got to the crux of things. There was a really cool use case as well from one of my customers in regard to the data Excel report. So they would pull the report after their Q&A session, we ran out of time. So after this town hall, there was like 10, 20 questions that were unanswered, which they didn't get round to answering. So they pulled that data report. And then in this screenshot that you can see on the slide at the moment in the top right hand corner, they made a new column with answers. So they just called this new column answers slash replies. And then they got the presenters, the hosts to answer those questions directly on the Excel next to the question. So it's really nice and easily organized and laid out. And then they just sent that out in the comms and email afterwards. So loads of different ways that you can do this. And I just thought that was a really cool use case because everything's all in one place. And it's just nice and easy for the audience to see those answers that didn't get addressed of all those questions. Vbox isn't just an online platform. So again, we're kind of putting that into practice ourselves through circumstance where we want you to send in your questions in your own time, send in your ideas. Bob can do the same thing in between sessions that he's running. He might want to hear from his audience and something that one of our customers is already using is it's called like an AMA or a dropping clinic. Basically, they have a VBOX session that never ends. It's just a perpetual session. And any time of day, any day of the week, any one of those colleagues can go in and access that VBOX session, send in their thoughts, their questions, their problems, their successes, their struggles, whatever it might be, they can just send it in to this board. And then every couple of weeks, the senior managers are looking after this board, takes the questions out, formulates his answers to those questions if they need answering, and then sends out a newsletter addressing those concerns, answering those questions, you know, congratulating the people that have had those successes. And it's a really nice way to kind of show that those colleagues are valued and they are being looked after. That kind of wraps up our sort of ideas and conversations and things. So just to kind of talk you through the, the takeaways, the big ones really that we've spoken about are opening your Q&A board early, getting comfortable with the Q&A board, getting comfortable with those questions coming in, encouraging everybody to get involved before the session, trying different things, mixing it up, experimenting moderation, collaborating with colleagues, trying different things on the Q&A board, Always make sure you answer all of your questions. Try and end on a high note. Get those responses out, regardless of whether that's afterwards or at the end of a session. And remember that it's not just an online tool. It can be used offline. It's great to get a sense of how colleagues are feeling between those sessions. Um, but thank you for watching this webinar. Thank you to Charlie and Lewis for all of their excellent content as well. And we look forward to seeing you in the next one.